Good morning. Welcome to worship. What a beautiful Sunday morning. I was sharing with a few people what a difference a week makes, right? Who would have thought from last Sunday to this Sunday? We are going to begin our worship service with our praise hymn, I Love You, Lord. So if you want to stand as you're able this morning, we'll join in singing this beautiful praise hymn, I Love You, Lord. Please stand as you're able this morning. Good morning. morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. I will worship the Lord with all my heart. For his works are so very great. His actions are glorious and his righteousness endures forever. Praise the Lord. We always remember his works and his incredible grace and compassion. The Lord is our provider and his promises never fall. Praise the Lord. All fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Praise the Lord. Now please join me in our next praise hymn, My Life is in You, Lord. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. With all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you lord my hope is in you lord in you it's in you my life is in you lord my strength is in you lord our hope is in you lord in you it's in you in you thank you for joining us please be seated Let us join together this morning in praying our prayer. What does it look like to see you with new eyes? What does it sound like to hear the voice of your spirit with open ears? 
open our eyes and ears. Let us see you clearly today and be ready to hear what you are speaking. Change us because we have been together in your presence. Allow the words of your scriptures to fill us and move us. We don't want to miss you, God. Thank you for this gathering place. Show us yourself. Speak to our hearts. Amen. Let us now share our joys and our concerns with one another. Uh, my uncle Jim, who lives in uh, down by Nashville, Tennessee, started treatment this week. He was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma. Um, and so we really need prayers for that. And yesterday, my father-in-law, Art Duhachuk, fell down the stairs and broke four ribs in the front and seven ribs in the back. Um, he's in the hospital now because they're watching him to, uh, he has a hard time breathing deeply, so they don't want him to develop pneumonia. Uh, plus, they've given him an epidural for the pain because there's not much you can do for broken ribs. So, uh, prayers for him. Thank you, Sue. Please keep Art and Jim in your prayers. It's good to see all of you back this week. It was a little short last week, but um, we did make it through the snowstorm. Last Friday was my sister's birthday. Allie, how old were you, Allie? Allie. Nine. Nine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Allie. In two more days, it's my sister's birthday, and she's turning eight. Ellie's turning eight. Well, congratulations to her, too. My brother, Larry, uh, in California, became a grandpa this week, so he's pretty excited. He has a new grandson, and his name is Brantley. Oh, congratulations. That's very exciting. Yeah, lots of good news this morning. That's good news. We were talking about birthdays just a few minutes ago, and I see Larry sitting there, right? <laughs> I didn't know your, your birthday was on Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know, I was going to say a silly thing. I was going to say, is it that way every year? But it would be because it's the 14th, right? So... So, happy birthday to Larry this evening. Huh? Any other birthdays we should be celebrating? Anybody else? Um, we know a couple, um, Andrew and Sabrina, who have been trying to get pregnant. She discovered that she is, she's seven weeks, but she is on bed rest. She has a genetic disorder that affects blood clotting, and so they're giving her medications so that hopefully she doesn't miscarry this time. So if you could keep them in your prayers, Andrew and Sabrina. Andrew and Sabrina. Thank you, Merlin. Um, I would also ask this morning for prayers for Dan. He is going to have minor surgery on Friday, so if you would keep Dan in your prayers, please. And just a reminder that next Sunday, uh, Reverend Tara Amundsen, our DS superintendent, will be here to preach the message. So I hope you'll come. Um, I know she will have a really good message for us. Um, she's going to talk about visioning. And then after that, we'll have koinonia as usual. And then um, for those who are able to stay, and we hope you will be able to do that, we'll have some sandwiches. And then we will do a little time of visioning for the church. So that's next Sunday. And also, while I'm thinking of it, um, it's not this coming Wednesday, but it would be the Wednesday after that. February 18th is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the Lenten season, and our Ash Wednesday service this year, the RCA service, is at the Macedonia United Methodist Church at 7.30 on Wednesday the 18th. So if you want to put that in your calendar. Any other joys or concerns this morning? Oh. Right, I forgot they get to go to district Saturday, right? The wrestlers, I don't know if you heard that. The wrestlers did really well yesterday. They get to go to, to sub-districts, is it called? Or? They go to, six of them go to districts, but they won their sectionals, so they will wrestle in the regional duels this week. Yeah, so congratulations to the wrestlers. That's really good news. They did really well. 
Very good. Congratulations to those young people and coaches. Thank you, Merlin. Let us bow our heads then for a time of silent prayer this morning. Loving God, we gather in your name this morning to bring you our prayers, to sing your praises, and to hear your word. We lift up prayers today, God, for our nation and and all our leaders, that they would um, follow after justice and righteousness, God. And we pray for your church to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for your spirit to fill us with your courage and compassion and mercy, God, Um, and strength so we can love as you have taught us and god we do just thank you again for our many blessings in our lives and today we lift up to you art dan jim rod donna bill carmela aline sue kim glenn and gala and we lift up to you sabrina god and her husband andrew we pray for them and we lift up to all those who have lost loved ones our soldiers and their families, all those who are in the nursing home and, and all those who are not feeling well today, God, and not able to be with us. We lift up all these people to you today, God, and again, we love you, God, and we just thank you for your presence with us and your faithfulness to us. Help us to be faithful to you. Pray these things in your son's name. Amen. At this time, uh, Viva is going to lead us in singing Fill My Cup, Lord. There were uh, several people who weren't able to be here for choir for different reasons. Some weren't feeling well. So we're going to sing Fill My Cup since it's Communion Sunday, and uh, Viva will lead us. It is on page 641. If you want to use your hymnals, there are numbers up there on the screen for you. Thank you, Viva. Will the children please come forward for the message this morning? Morning. How's everybody this morning? Good. Are you good? All right. Well, I have a question to ask you, and I know you'll know the answer, okay? So, what holiday, we call it holidays, is coming up next week? Valentine's Day, you know all about Valentine's Day, don't you? Next week, right? Because today's Sunday, yeah. Is your food? That'll be extra special, won't it? Yeah, Valentine's Day, the fourteenth, right? So sometimes people give gifts around Valentine's Day, or they think about things that help them think about love. So I want you to see if you can think of any of those things that I'm talking about, and then I've got some in my bag, and we'll see if you can think about what I have in the bag. Does that make sense? So what do people do at Valentine's Day? What do they give? <laughs> you? They give out candy. Well, you know what? I think. Candy? I can believe that. You can believe that? You know what? When we're all done, 
You'll, I'll give you some. How would that be? Okay, but I'm trying to find my box. Okay, I'm just trying to find these so I can show you. Okay, so box of candy, right? This is what, <laughs> this isn't what I have for you. I have for candy, but not a big box. Um, it's candy, chocolate. It's chocolate, right? So sometimes we give that at Valentine's Day, right? People give candy sometimes. Okay, so what else? What else do you think's in my bag? What else do people give it? Chocolate. Chocolate. Well, okay, we're going to say presents. What kind of presents? What else? Teddy bears, yeah. Sometimes teddy bears. I've got. Oh, we're getting. You got one, Keaton. Just a second. Okay, so here's the teddy bear. Sometimes people give give like Valentine bears, right? For Valentine's Day, sometimes it says it just says love you, love you, love you over and over. So that's something. Okay, it's pretty soft, isn't it? And love on the feet. Okay, anything else? Hmm. Do you see on TV sometimes they have have bouquets of what? Flowers. Do some people give flowers? Yeah, roses or whatever. So here's some pink ones. Okay. So that's something else people give. Okay. I think I have. Well, you know what, Keaton, you said it, and then we were in the middle of something. So I cards. So somewhere here I have a. I have a Valentine Day card that I that I got. Okay. So sometimes yeah. So sometimes we give cards, right? All right. One more thing. It just says loves are filled. Our lives are filled with happiness. And it says, Happy Valentine's Day inside. So one more thing. This would be maybe more for, for girls than maybe boys wouldn't get this. They might. Um, what do I have around my neck? And do sometimes have you ever heard people giving, giving um, like jewelry for Valentine's Day? Sometimes. No? Well, sometimes. There's just a heart sometimes. So sometimes people give. You can't see it? <laughs> Okay, so those are just lots of things. Anyone else? Yep. Okay, and candy, right? So all these things sitting on my lap are things that maybe we think about um, show love, right? But I have something else that I want you just to think about today that also shows love that maybe sometimes we don't think about it, but it does. So I got Elio. You do. I got two. You got two. Wow. Okay, I brought this today because what is this? Cross. How could the cross show us love? What do you think? What about the cross? When we see a cross, how would that, how would that show us love? Don't know. What did Jesus do for us? He hanged up there just so we could live. Right, he died for us so we could live. Isn't that like a big sign of love? Big sign of love? So kind of think about the cross. When you see the cross, we see the cross up there, right? Way up there by the stained glass window. When you see a cross, think about that means love too. It means lots of love from Jesus. Okay, and then I have one other thing that's really important that sometimes we don't think about. No. What is this? Bible. You know what some Bible. people call the Bible? They say it's God's love letter to us, to all of you. Have you ever heard it said that way? A love letter. A love letter. Valentine's Day isn't about candy. No, it's not. Valentine's Day isn't about candy. It's about love, right? And the Bible is all about love, God's love for us. So just kind of think about that when you're thinking about Valentine's Day. All those other things are fun, but we want to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross and his word to us that tells us over and over how much he loves us, okay? That's like the best Valentine, right? You are good listeners, and you know what? When we're done, I've got a little thing that says love one another, and you know what? Anna, do you want to come over here now? And when you're done, no, when, after we pray and after we get a bulletin, then you can get kind of in single line, and Anna's going to hand it out to you over there by the first pew. Thank you, Anna. Okay, can we bow our heads and you can pray the words after me? Thank you. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to remember, to share your great love with others. Amen. Okay, let me give you one of these. You can have candy, yes? Anna will give you... Thank you. I dropped it, didn't I? Thank you. There you. I gave you two. Thank you. There you go. You want one? You want one of those? Then you can get some candy. Okay. Do you want to go get some candy from Anna? Okay. The Old Testament lesson for today will be from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Do you not know? Were you not told long ago? 
Have you not heard how the world began? It was made by the one who sits on his throne, above the earth and beyond the sky. The people below look as tiny as ants. He stretched out the sky like a curtain, like a tent in which to live. He brings down beautiful rulers and reduces them to nothing. They are like young plants, just set out and barely rooted. When the Lord sends a wind, they dry up and blow away like straw. To whom can the Holy Lord be compared? Is there anyone else like him? Look up at the sky. Who created the stars you see? The one who leads them out like an army. He knows how many there are and calls each one by name. His power is so great, not one of them is ever missing. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are, who are young grow weak. Young people can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Please stand for the gospel lesson from the Gospel of Mark this morning. Jesus heals many people. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever, and as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town in a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, We must go on to the other villages around here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he traveled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of God. Let us now sing praise to the Lord the Almighty.
Please be seated. Isn't that a beautiful hymn? Pretty words. Very recently, I was looking through a publication of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. It's called The Decision Magazine. Maybe some of you get that magazine as well. It was um, one of the articles in the magazine was advertising an upcoming training event. The training event was for people who are interested in being trained to be part of the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team. This, what they call the RRT, Rapid Response Team, help others with emotional and spiritual needs during times of crises. In 2014, last year, the RRT responded to many crises, such as the one in Washington State when a deadly landslide left several small communities devastated. In Nebraska, with the twin tornadoes, they went there. Uh, The campus shooting at Florida State University. And most recently, the rioting in Ferguson, Missouri. They were there. I started to think it can't be easy to be a part of such a team. Bringing words of hope in the midst of a crisis can be very hard. I imagine the responses the RRT receives from the people they minister to is as varied as the crises they respond to. Um, Some people would welcome words of hope at that time, but others, as we can imagine, might be be angry and maybe a little bitter, and maybe those words um, don't mean a lot to them at that time. I'm sure they're filled with frustration and doubts. I don't really know what that rapid response training involves, but it's a Christian organization, so we can assume that the teaching of the Bible would certainly play an important role in what they are taught. As I thought about those people ministering to people in the time of crises, I thought, surely um, there are some similarities to what they are called to do and what the prophet Isaiah that Andrew shared with us today um, was called to do. The prophet Isaiah really had a tough job. Sometimes we forget how hard the life was for the prophets in the Old Testament. He had to call to preach words of hope in the midst of despair, in the midst of loss. A crisis had taken place then too. God's people had been defeated by the Babylonians, and they had uh, many of them had been taken captive. They had been in exile for many years away from their homeland. Some really believed that God had deserted them. Some were still angry over what had happened to them many years before. And some even began to doubt God's existence, which probably most of us can relate to. When bad things happen, the things we know to be true in our good times um, become a little muddy, a little harder to see them clearly. When our lives are moving along pretty smoothly, we know that our God loves us. We know God will never leave us. But spend a few days or months or maybe even years in a crisis kind of situation and pretty soon we don't know what to believe. So although these words of hope were directed to those in exile, they are also words for us today because we're not that much different from the people in Bible times. We too face hardships. We get discouraged. We need to hear words of hope as well. Isaiah begins by reminding us that God is all-powerful. God is above everyone and everything. And I think that's probably a pretty good strategy on Isaiah's part because sometimes we forget that when we're in trouble. Uh, We see no possible solution to our problems. We we can't see any way that they're going to get better. We can't see how they can be fixed. Um, What happens, and it's only natural, we become too focused on our problem. And so Isaiah is reminding us to look up, literally and figuratively. He says, look up at the sky, the stars, you know, all that God has created. Look at the sky. You know, how could you doubt God's power to help you? If he had the power to create the universe, how can you doubt that he can help you? And then he goes on to say, don't you know? Haven't you heard? Isaiah repeats those questions in the passage for today. And that's because they are all important questions for them and for us. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? Our response as Christians, that is, if we have been hearing or reading the Bible stories of how God time and time again saved the people, should be a resounding yes, yes. We have heard, we know. We know those stories. We've heard them. We've heard the creation story. We've heard how God was faithful to Joseph in the midst of his long imprisonment. We have heard how God heard the cries of the children who were in bondage in Israel, who were being, excuse me, in Egypt, who were being 
um, forced to do hard labor. God heard them, and he sent Moses to deliver them out of that bondage. We've heard how God protected Daniel when he was sent into the lion's den. And we have heard the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And we certainly have heard the story of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection three days later. We've also heard the story of Jesus forgiving Peter for denying the Lord, not once, but three times. And we have heard the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. We know, right, and have heard all of these stories and many more. The Bible reminds us that God is faithful and that we can place our trust in God. You know, and it's not just the Bible stories that we know. We also have our own stories that we know. Um, Last year, I can't remember on one Sunday morning what Sunday it was, I handed out stones. If you were there, you may remember. I encourage you to write a word or two on your stone about a significant time in your life when you knew God was with you, a time when you had called out to God for help. Uh, I shared with you what I had written on, on my three stones that I had brought with me that Sunday. On one of the stones, I had written Rachel Hospital, and that was for me to remember the time my first child, Rachel, when she was a second grader, was in the hospital with a very, very serious infection, sinus infection, that the doctor was very concerned about. Um, She was there for 10 days. Uh, That was one of my stones that I remember the time, how hard it was for me and how God was with me during that time. Uh, The other one I had written on at Guatemala when I went on a volunteer um, mission trip to Guatemala and was a little um, fearful of, of that experience and how God was with me. And I journaled every day about God's faithfulness to me during that time. And on the third one, I had written simply July 2011, um, the day that I began at this church. And again, with doubts and fears and um, concerns for a new ministry, and uh, God um, was faithful to me. Um, our stories are so important. All of you have stories. I know you do. That's why you're here. God has been faithful to you. It, 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 some of these stories are just... Um, so important to recall. Um, We especially need to recall them when we are in the midst of troubles that can cause us to question God's love for us. Um, We're in the midst of it. It's really hard to see sometimes God there. So that's when we need to think back of the times that we know God was with us. And that gives us faith that he will be with us at these times too. And there is something else we need to do with our stories. Um, And I know it's hard sometimes, but we really need to share them. Our faith stories are not meant to be kept to ourselves. Our stories have really a lot of power, real power to change people's lives. You know, I am very thankful for the countless people through the years who have shared with me how God was faithful to them during the difficult days. They inspire me. They give me hope. Um, They helped renew my faith in God. I listened to this quote from Calling Forth Voices of Hope by Bob Hartley and Johnny Enlow. Uh, This is a quote in their book. We all need our marvelous comrades, fellow hope reformers, to come alongside us and sing the song of our heart even when we forget the tune. So important to support other people with our faith stories. I really do hope you are sharing your faith stories with others. You know, we do that in part um, during our joys and concerns when people lift up and celebrations and answered prayer. We share those faith stories um, we do it um, during Koinonia time as we have that um, small group time. But we really do it better through our involvement with small groups, whether that be with a group of women who meet outside of the church uh, for Bible study or the men's breakfast, or maybe through adult Sunday school or other small groups that are offered. Maybe through a neighborhood group you're a part of or, or one-on-one with a friend or relative. We need to share our stories, and we need to know and hear the faith stories of others. Today, we will remember one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. It's recorded in all four Gospels. It is the story of Jesus eating the Passover meal with his disciples. And we know um, while he was doing that, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and he gave thanks and he said, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is a beautiful story because people under the old covenant, those who lived before Jesus, could now approach God. Um, Before, they could only approach God through a priest and an animal sacrifice. Now all people can come directly to God through faith because Jesus' death has made us acceptable in God's eyes. 
Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, was slain on the cross, a sinless sacrifice so that our sins could be forgiven once and for all. Jesus goes on to assure his disciples and us of victory over death and of their and our future with him. The almighty creator of the universe loves you and promises to be with you. May the power of the spirit of our creator God lift us up on the wings of hope and help us to soar. And all God's children said, Amen. I would ask our ushers to take our offering now, please. stand. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. You are the greatest giver of all, Lord. You are the provider of all things and the one who has called us to work for the growth of your kingdom. Bless the gifts we bring so our efforts will bring about praise to your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated and we'll sing this uh, communion hymn, a beautiful hymn, I Come With Joy. It's on 617 if you're using your hymnal.
in your hymnals, please turn to page 12 for our invitation and confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. On page 15, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in the final victory and we all feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I do invite you when you come forward to take the bread and dip it in the juice, and please feel free to kneel at the rail or to go back to your pew to pray. Um, If the communion stewards would come forward now, please. ready please come
Let us join together in praying our prayer after receiving. God of grace and glory, we are thankful for your abiding presence here and in our lives. You invite us to your table to partake of a banquet only you can host. With a sense of humility, we accept your generous hospitality. We're grateful for the word and the meal that sustains us like no other. Renewed and strengthened by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will strive to share your hospitality and grace with all we encounter. Amen. Now stand as you're able. We'll join in singing Jesus Calls Us. Thank you for joining us for worship, and I do invite you to stay for a time of refreshments and fellowship. And I do um, want to just remind you again about next week, about our, our guest preacher, um, our DS, coming, and our fellowship time following that, and a time to vision for the church, um, to decide where God wants us to go. We do pray that you'll be able to join us next Sunday. Go in peace. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you for always. Amen. Amen.